Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of our uh, VCIO Toolbox Open Coaching Hours. My name is Brian Doyle, and um, for those of you that may not know me, and I appreciate you taking some time to learn about our new features that we've released this week. Additional information will be hitting your email boxes later today. But uh, today we're going to kick things off with going through some of the different um, assessment or different features that have been added within this um, platform. Uh, with that being said, I have opened up chat. Love to hear from you. So if you have any questions, concerns, thoughts, or just want to express yourself, love to get this going and make it very interactive. So love to have you contribute there. If you have any Q&A and you want to be a little bit more private about it, feel free to drop that into the Q&A box that you'll see on your Zoom uh, toolbar, and I'll be happy to answer those questions as part of the uh, the conversation today as well. Um, we're at 3.02, so I think we've given people enough time to jump in today, and, um, and we've got a lot to cover, so I want to get going and uh, kind of hit the ground running a little bit. So um, we're very excited about this release. While we got the majority of features that we wanted to get in for this period into the system, um, we, we will have a mini release a little bit later this month uh, to cover a couple other items that just had uh, some bugs that, bugs that needed to be fixed. But really, there was some big, um, big ground covered in this and um, in terms of the upgrades within this release. First thing is uh, the addition of a white space analysis tool. For those of you that might not be familiar with what uh, a white space analysis is, it's the ability to look at your customers and stack rank them against all of your different, um, you know, assessment or excuse me, all your different tech stack items. So if you go into the QBR module, and some of you might be familiar with this already, under templates, you know that we've got a number of different uh, templates available to you here. When you come into the templates, you'll see one that started for you called Tech Stack Review. Now, depending on when you came on board, some of these are maybe a little bit more involved than others. If you came to us really early, it's possible you might not have this Tech Stack Review. I'll review how you can build a new one very easily in a moment. But this is an, a template that I strongly suggest you building out and aligning to whatever your company's particular tech stack is. Now you'll notice here we've got some uh, some standard options available to you. Um, you know these topics here they can be edited. You can change the uh, the topic name if you want to. You of course can add topics like you can within any template here. So as you build those different stack sets, what I'd really like you to think about here is kind of grouping them by the content or the context. You'll see here that I've got various questions tied to each one of these. It's not kind of one topic, one question. So when I click here into servers, you know, I'm able to show, you know, what server brand we're looking for, if we have a virtualization brand, and you can expand from there, operating system level, whatever you'd like to put into your, your tech stack, I encourage you to do so. If you want to give your end user some guidance on how to find this information, if you are assigning this tech stack out, you guys have seen this, this came in our last release, you can build a help item here as well. So, you know, I encourage you to do that. And certainly you can standardize and build recommendation choices. This is a great place to put in projects that are very tech specific, stack specific, specific, and give you the opportunity to align to them. But in a few moments, I'll show you that you can align to any built recommendation as well. So if you've already identified that you need to upgrade that firewall that isn't meeting your tech stack as part of your QBR effort, you'll be able to align to that project in the tech stack to make that connection between project and tech stack deficiency. And in a few moments, when I show you the scoreboard or the, yeah, the scorecard, excuse me, you'll see how these things come together. So I really encourage you to come into your, uh, you know, your tech stack your arena here and, um, you know, build out your tech stack summary. Now, when I come in here to a customer, um, you know, I would just come into my customer like I normally would, go into my IT review. Um, you know, I would build a tech stack meeting. So for those of you that are not familiar with the meeting type, the meeting type will dictate what templates are being utilized and how within the system, and then how that data will be grouped long-term. So I'm gonna set this as a tech stack meeting type. I'm gonna make sure that I've got my tech stack template aligned here. 
So I would come into my templates area and pick my tech stack template. And now when I go to my IT review, I can switch over to that tech stack review and just conduct my uh, tech stack as I would. Now you're gonna notice I got a little bit different answer key than you guys are used to here. I'm gonna hold on that a minute, but that's gonna be part of our conversation with new scoring and answer key methods that we've introduced into BCIO Toolbox. For the tech stack, I'm, I'm uh, suggesting that you use one where you just come in here, select you know best practices, and now you can move on to the next one. So I'm gonna leave everything else alone. I'm just gonna close this out for demonstration. Um, actually, I'm gonna go back here I'm gonna hit my existing recommendations. And as I mentioned earlier, you can align a recommendation that already exists, or you can create a new one here. I'm just gonna align this one. I know it's not exactly right, but I just wanna show you how it ties together within the scoreboard. Now, once I do, I'm done with my assess or tech stack assessment. I'll just close out that meeting like I would close out any meeting. And now I've completed this customer's tech stack review. When I come over to the CAM module now, under reporting, you will see the new white space analysis scorecard. So you can see here within this system, I've assessed a few different customers. And now at a very easy and quick glance, I can see which customers are compliant and non-compliant to what standards exist in my tech stack. Below each one of these tech stack standards, I'm able to see the value of that upgrade so I can get a sense of what the, you know, the cross-sell and upsell opportunity is. And then down here, I'm able to see the total opportunities across categories and overall for my organization. So what does this all really mean to you? It means now you can really start getting your sales teams empowered. You're really able to put together some low hanging fruit and really be able to show the customer or sh I mean, show your sales teams where there's opportunity that they can potentially go get today. It's also going to help you when you're assessing your relationships with your customers. You know, who's really adhering to your standards? Are they dragging behind in this process? And are they really uh, moving forward with you? So, you know, as you conduct those tech stack uh, um, assessments, you're really going to build out a nice um, grid here where you can really see where you're struggling, you know, even internally, where we might be struggling to get people to adopt. You know, this is only a couple customers here, of course, but I can already see that in this case, I'm struggling to get people to move forward with security awareness for whatever reason. I may want to take some time with my vendor then and really see how I can get trained to better serve my customers and get them to believe in that security awareness. You know, I'm seeing the same thing here with firewall brand, but as you guys know, a lot of times that's just a timing situation, um, you know, of getting that when the upgrade comes. So again, that is kind of the white space analysis tool in the process here. It's really meant to, again, help you find those customers that are not compliant, where they're not compliant, and really start seeing where there might be some uh, easy to get sales in your environment. So certainly if you have any questions on that, love to see them in chat or in QA. Uh, love to see you guys explore that and, and uh, really get involved with the white space analysis. It's something we had a lot of customers really looking for. They wanted to see an easy way to understand where they can get some you know, hidden opportunity quickly and how they can make sure that they're measuring how people are ultimately getting to their stack. The next thing is multi-location support in GRC assessments. This is something that'll be coming to QBR in our next rollout. Um, but uh, what we have now have the capability of doing is building um, basically sub-accounts here. And this is something else that many customers had indicated. When it comes to security assessments, especially, in order to complete some of these regulatory um, requirements, especially in customers that are more enterprise-based and have multiple locations, each location requires an assessment to be completed. So you'll see here when I come into my customer April Fools now, I have the ability to add both departments and sites. This used to be combined in the past. We've now separated this out into two different standards. Departments does allow you to do uh, GRC assessments against those departments, but really that's more for the budgeting side of things where you're able to show, let's say, a state and local government, you know, not only that can they see their full budget, but they can see the breakdown between different divisions or different departments or different sites in that manner. When we go to site and location, in addition to budget, we have the ability to launch independent assessments against those sites and locations. 
So you'll see here when I enter into my GRC assessment, you'll note there's a couple new icons located up here at the top of the page. I can now click into an office location. Oops, actually I'm hitting a department there. Sorry about that. I can hit into, I may have reversed these when I built them. I can hit into it, uh, an office location. And now you'll see that I've got my locations listed here and I can choose assessments exclusively for that as location. So now I can come in here, you know, pick whatever control set that I want to assess this customer for, come in here, conduct this assessment like I traditionally would. And um, you'll see here that I have the ability to, um, you know, toggle between different assessments, just like I would with the master customer. But really what this allows us to do is do those assessment breakdowns, and then those breakdowns become part of the customer record. Let's go back to my parent organization. I simply click here, and I can go back into their assessment, and now I'm presented with whatever assessments that those folks had. So this is really going to give us the ability to, um, you know, to work with our customers and, um, you know, and uh, really drill in and be able to do those lo different locations, hold those assessments together, really pinpoint where there might be gaps in security in different locations and truly bring that to a customer's intention or, excuse me, attention. And of course, that also allows us to go one step further in also uh, building a little bit extra revenue, because now we can take an assessment process that was more central-based and expand it out to these locations, obviously increasing the scope of work as well. So that's a highlight there. This process, and again, you can do it by departments as well, but this process will be available to you as well uh, in the QBR section after our release in later April. A couple of bugs being worked out there to make it work as well. Now, since we're in here right now, I do want to show a little bit about um, some delegation changes as well. This is not a major update, but as you all know that we added uh, delegation into our assessment capabilities last period. So um, I'm actually going to go to a different customer for a moment because I've already done what I want to show you today here. Um, I'm just going to come in here and assign this program. And you'll see when I come into this program, I can still continue to delegate questions like I have traditionally, like uh, we implemented last period, where you can now choose one of your contacts as a collaborator within this process with you. And then when I'm ready to send those questions to that particular collaborator, I can come into the delegation area, take a look at what's been assigned to them, and send them that, uh, that notification, letting them know that they are now part of this assessment process, right? Now, that is our standard, you know, as you're going through an assessment, where you want to engage your customer, you're able to do so. We've now opened this up to global um, you know, capability as well, or I, maybe I shouldn't say global, but entire template capability. So if you're working with a customer, and this is really part goes hand in hand with the third party risk management module, we'll be talking a little bit about a little bit at the tail end of this call today. If you have an assessment that you want to totally put in your customer's uh, hands, please do, you know, you can do so very easily by coming up here to the all but delegate all questions button. I can now click on this select and you'll see here that all questions in this assessment has now de been delegated to that user. When I come in here, I can now see that they've got the complete assessment delegated to them. I can send that assessment to them. Mm -hmm. And if you guys recall from our release last month, they have the ability to then click on a link set up a user credential and go in and answer these questions as well. If they answer partially, they have the ability to save those answers and you're gonna be able to track their status in completing this assessment here as well. So very quickly, we can see that this customer hasn't completed any questions out of 17, that will grow. And as you may recall, as soon as those answers come back into your system, they will set the answer key here but more importantly, you will see any of their notes that they provide to you down below. And you will see any reference and evidence links show up in that area as well. So you can actually get them to really engage, collaborate, 
provide evidence. And if you want to utilize their notes in your response, you can incorporate them by simply clicking on this button. So again, the, the delegation now can be done at the individual question level. So if you're conducting this assessment and you find a half a dozen questions you need to engage your customer on, you can absolutely do so right there. But we can also delegate all questions to a customer by simply choosing on that command from our secondary menu bar and engaging our customer. Now, um, another slight UI UX thing you may have noticed when I was going through here was we've now created our action section to be a tabbed section as opposed to um, you know just a text-based section. It's a minor change. You know, I, I'll be the first to attest to. It's not going to change uh, a lot, except it's going to reduce some of the eye strain that goes on as you're going through these reports. These boxes were getting very text heavy as we were adding new features like reference evidence links, the ability to add policy and so forth. And now what we've really done is just made that a simple tab process. You, so you can simply click into the area that you wanna work on. If you wanna create a new ticket, you can do so very easily here. And now that ticket history will obviously become part of this record but it's in a much cleaner format for you. I can look at a recommendation. I can come back over to tickets and track things and go from there. So again, that's a subtle part of the upgrade, certainly not uh, you know, business impacting per se, but uh, you know, definitely will help you uh, with organization and certainly uh, you know, hopefully simplifying at least kind of going through the process. You're not searching for things as much when you're on the screen. I'm coming back over to QBR and going into templates. So we have introduced some new scoring methodologies. For many of you that have been with us for a long time, you know that there's two things that have often come up that people have asked for, uh, you know, as simplification within the process. And a couple of those things were as follows. One, you know, around scoring, you know that we measure it as business, um, you know, best practices technical vulnerability, and business risk. And certainly we're not taking that away from you, but that is the scoring method that we've had. Some folks said, hey, I really just want to align against best practices, or I just want to identify where we have risk. And now we now give you the capability to do so within the templates. Another thing that came up often about our scoring system with um, you know, our standard scoring system, it was made with the intention of acting very much like a credit score or the SATs, if you guys can remember back to taking them, or in my case, my kids taking them more recently, you get points for showing up, right? The network was operational, so thus you get points for that network being operational today. As such, it often skewed our red, greens, and yellows a little bit high, right? So we would have to kind of explain away why we might have an 88 and that's in the red. So we, you know, we listened to our customers. This is something we didn't enter into lightly because we wanted to make sure we really understood what they were looking to accomplish. And what we've done now is given you the ability to leverage other scoring systems when you're building, um, building your reports. Now, when you see a lot here, it's really just three scoring systems. The standard BPVR is exactly what we have today. Standard scoring, best practices, vulnerabilities, and risk. Those of you guys that have been on the system for a while, you'll probably want to stay there, at least with your existing customers, because you don't want to make a crazy impact uh, to your, uh, you know, to your um, your schedule. Excuse me, uh, to your scorecards. But as you start new customers, and for those that are recently jumping on board here with us at BCIO Toolbox, you may want to use either the average average or the average all points um, scoring systems. The average average best practice and the average average best uh, risk work exactly the same. The only difference is your toggle or your scoring indicator, similar to, to the best practice vulnerability and risk, will either be best practice or risk, depending on how you want to set that up. Average average simply means if you think about our stackable templates for business review, each one of those templates is going to create an hour. Each section is going to create an average score for that section. All sections are created equal. They then are averaged up to an average score for the overall scorecard. That's very similar to how our GRC mod models work today. In the terms of the average all points, this looks at all the weighted values of the customers, creates a pool of points based on those weighted values. And then as quest and those uh, that total sum of points is then divided into a score of 100. 
So as you go through things, it still gives a weighted value to the question. If you click off a five, you know, a question that has a five rating, it will take off the maximum percentage point allowed based on, you know, what five shares of that 100 pool looks like. That may sound a little complex. I would I would share it with you to try it, but it's basically saying, okay, if I'm assessing 200 questions, each question, if rated exactly the same, is worth one point, right? You know, 100, uh, 200 questions or a half a point. But if I have those 200 questions put together a pool of 600 points based on those one, twos and threes and, you know, one through five scoring ratings that we do, I now have a pool of points of let's say 500 points. And every time I have a, you know what, hit a five rating, I'm gonna take five shares of that point off my 100 score. Either way, what we've seen is the average average um, scoring and the average all points work more traditionally in a little bit sco lower scoring methodology. So if you're somebody that's really out there that wants to show a customer that, hey, you're in the 40s right now, you use one of those scoring methodologies. If you're somebody that wants to show that they're still doing well and move forward, you would work with our standard algorithm, which is where we started. I encourage you to play with those a little bit. We will do deeper dives into how those um, you know, those different scoring methodologies handle in the upcoming coaching sessions here. Um, but, um, you know, we do give you flexibility now to tell the story you want to tell with a customer. And to give you a sense of, you know, how that works, I'm going to go back into that customer I was in before, April Fool's. And I'm going to go back in and create yet another tech stack meeting just because I know I have a different scoring model there. And when I come into that tech stack review, you'll see now that I've got a single question, I've got, I'm able to answer best practices. This one is using average, average best practice. So basically I have two questions in this pool that scores a 50% here. Now it's looking at 50%, 100, 100, and 100. And based on that, it's producing a score of 80%. If I come down here, and I take this best practice and make it no. I've now changed this score to, you know, a roundup of the 66.6 kind of thing. And now those two scores, along with these two scores, generate an 80 as a scorecard view. So, you know, what you're seeing here is basically within each section, as I make these changes and say that these things are not meeting my best practices, it's generating a topic-based score, which really allows us to communicate how we're performing within the topic. And then those things are averaging out to create an overall score, which is now more in line with kind of the spirit of what we're looking for here. So that's a little bit of how that new scoring methodology works. Um, another couple, quick thing um, you will see for those of you that are GRC subscribers coming into the GRC section, th these are being rolled out and you'll see it in your instances over the next 24 hours. Uh, you'll, you will see that we have now got the updated ISO 2701 uh, um, 22 uh, controls in here for ISO users. And you will see over the next couple of weeks, a template dropping in pretty much every week. I think our next one is SOC 2. We're going to look at starting to spread out the increase of um, SOC um, uh, GRC templates into kind of a week weekly template launch until we get all the templates that we'd like to get in for compliance and privacy into the system as well. So you can now go in and see uh, UI UX. So um, some other things um, that you can do too in the system that are going to be really helpful for you, you can save your starting page now. A lot of our customers had asked, you know, hey, I don't want to come straight into the cam. I want to come into QBR when I log on. If that's the case, just click on save starting page when you're on the QBR. Next time you log in, that, that will come up. So you can really now customize your starting point as you see fit. Another new feature uh, within the system is you can now add notes to your recommendations. This was another big ask. We, You all recall that we have put in the ability to capture your action items, especially in a meeting view, uh, and create tasks to get it. But what if you just want to put in a simple note, especially when a customer declines a project? You can now attach notes to your recommendations. They stay with that record, and we have those to refer back to as well. Um, we've done some updates within the reports. Um, PO, uh, POEMs and GRC now have impact ratings as well. So you can come into your reporting here if you're a GRC user come into uh, you know, your security and, uh, oops, 
sorry, come into your POEM here. And if you haven't seen this yet, you can actually look at the uh, the POEM, look at the uh, the risk, how, how many controls it aligns with, what's the impact of this risk, and what frameworks it ties to. And now that can be incorporated into reporting as well for your customers. So those are a couple of the smaller updates. Again, there'll be uh, notifications going out after this meeting today, letting you know what the new, uh, all the new features here. But those are the big ones. In the couple moments that we have left, I'm going to introduce the third-party risk module, and we do have a promotion for you if you want to be, uh, you know, a, a, an adopter and bring that into your GRC module. But we're going to do a separate class specifically on the third-party module. There's going to be actually promotions around this as the product launches formally tomorrow. So um, inside the GRC, you'll now see that I have the ability to do third-party assessments. I've got a third-party dashboard specific to measuring my vendors. And really the goal with this tool is really for customers that are starting to um, you know, really expand with their clients into being a VCSO, are starting to build four-fee VCI or VCSO programs, which include vendor management, and giving you the ability to assess that vendor risk for your customer, either as a fee, you know, for a fee or as a contract. Um, in order to do that, you will need the third-party um, module. And what this third-party module really lets you do is do assessments on vendors. We do have a very vendor-specific vendor risk assessment we've added to the catalog. You can set up global suppliers. You see we have Workday here. That could be your customers like Microsoft and other groups like that that you're going to share amongst all of your clients. Which, more importantly, you can assess vendors and suppliers that are very unique and specific to the customer. So when you come into the customer screen here, you'll notice a couple icons. A little truck here for view suppliers and a little, uh, I think that's a building with a smokestack or something like that for vendors. I'm gonna click into vendors here and you'll see that I'm now able to create my vendor record very easily here. Um, just so you can see what that experience is like, I would create a vendor record just like customer records. Once I create it, I can add contacts to that record. And now I can conduct my assessment. Here, um, you'll see that I've chosen as my uh, assessment, the vendor risk assessment, which is a new template uh, that you've got available to you or a new GRC program, I should entitle it as. And now your customer, and now you can allocate all of these questions to your vendor, allowing them to then, um, you know, answer those questions and really give you a risk response that you can catalog and share with your customer. You can also send them standard, um, you know, standard um, assessment types as well. So if you're working with a customer that happens to be defense-based and they really need all their suppliers to submit a NIST 800-171, you can absolutely attach that to the customer as well. So this is just a way to really organize how your customers our you know, um, vendors are performing under their account. So you've got a list of that vendor risk and you can really build a profile. Now, as you conduct these assessments, you're gonna get individual scorecards on the risk for each customer. I probably should have showed that to you here. So you'll see that you know we've got our traditional um, you know risk and scorecard report, and I'm able to see that this customer you know was a 79 today against our risk assessment that we put forth to them. But um, and that's on the NIST 800-171. If I wanted to, um, if I want to now then work with that vendor. Uh, sorry, I need to come back here. I'm still learning my way around a little bit myself. If I want to now generate a risk score for that vendor. I can do so very easily here. And when I generate that risk score, it goes through an equation. Uh, we will go through this in a later training, but you do have access to that equation if you wanna weigh things a little bit more differently. And you'll see right now, this gives a vendor an overall risk score of 66. It differs a little bit from the assessment because the assessment's just telling you how many points they lost against your assessment. This is looking at the controls, the weighted controls, and a number of other focus points in order to generate an overall risk score of that vendor and kind of normalize it across all vendors where you might utilize different assessments. Then when you come up to your customer record, you can then generate a risk score for your customer as well. And you'll see that, um, you know, I've now generated this risk score. 
which is a total of a minus 183 right now. And that's because we have a number of customers that we haven't conducted risk assessments on yet as well. It's a benchmark that'll allow you to start really tracking where you sit with your customer, what their risk score is as well. So you know where their risk posture sits, and then you can look at the risk scores of each one of their vendors downstream. Again, there'll be much more training on that. The way pricing is gonna go for the TPRM, um, basically uh, for every customer, you're allowed 10 vendors. Now that's an aggregate. So, um, you know, we're not sitting there going, oh, you've got 12 vendors here, but you've got eight vendors there. And, um, you know, and uh, you need to make some changes. So, um, you know, basically if you're on our BCIO toolbox, um, you know, GRC or bundle program, and you're at the 10 user level, you would have up, up to a hundred um, vendors that you can access. In the chat window, I just put our promotional pricing. For the next 10 days, we're running a launch special, basically 25% off of any of our TPRM um, uh, add-on packages. So if you are interested in TPRM, now's the time to get involved um, and get that attached to your subscription. But um, you know, we will certainly be doing more trainings on this. If you want to kind of look at that a little bit more, we'll be doing trainings on really how to build out your VC so programs and your VCIO programs so you can expand out and open new consultative opportunities, uh, allowing you to fund these efforts as well. But um, you know, certainly uh, as of tomorrow, for those that were not part of our beta, um, TPRM goes live at that point in time. Um, Awesome. That's great, James. Love to hear it. And I'll get with you on that one on one a little bit later as well. But um, and I think Joe, I think I see a, another gentleman on that I've been talking to, Joe. I know that's been enabled in your instance as well. And I'll connect with you offline on that also. So, the, um, guys, you know, I know we're getting near the end of our time, probably a couple minutes over. But that is really a quick highlight on uh, all the different new features that have come in in this period. I know another big one uh, that folks have on the table is warranties. That was something we were trying to get into this release. I promise you we're close. We just have a couple of things that we've got to clean up on the warranty side and so we can make sure that we're not diminishing the user um, experience. It does have a performance load, so the guys are re-architecting it. I'm very transparent with you guys when these things happen. They're building it so processing can happen on a different server so it doesn't impact the use case because we anticipate when that goes on, we're going to have a lot of people hitting that uh, that warranty refresh button on day one. So uh, we're 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 not too far away on that, guys. Bear with me, but and I appreciate all your patience on it. But we're excited to get that out and want to do it and do it right first time. If anybody else has any other questions after we leave today, uh, please give me a shout out at uh, B Doyle at VCIO Toolbox. And I thank you all for joining me as always every Tuesday. If you've got any subjects you want us to cover, email me there as well. And I'll see you all again next Tuesday. Thanks for the time.